Well, there is breaking news out of Newport News, Virginia tonight. There was a terrifying shooting inside an elementary school that late this afternoon, a female teacher was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries and a student, we are just learning, six years old, was taken into custody after the shooting at Richneck Elementary. The altercation was between a six-year-old, the, the student uh, who did have the firearm, and the teacher, and then a round was fired. Just stunning to hear that. Police say the shooting was not accidental, and they are investigating where the young boy got that handgun. We put so much effort in our children today. We put effort into making sure that they're not bullied, make sure that they eat the right things, make sure they go to the right schools, make sure they wear the right things. But why is it after seeing all this effort that we're putting into the children, it seems as though the children are getting not just worse, but demonstrably worse. When you can have a six-year-old child to intentionally pull the trigger after getting some sort of altercation with the teacher, first of all, there should not even be an altercation with a six-year-old in the teacher. But then the fact that the six-year-old has a gun, which obviously speaks to what's happening at home, because the child did not get this gun, obviously, legally, so the child must have got it from home, which speaks to what's happening there. There's a, lar there's a larger issue here. And while your heart goes out to, obviously, that teacher and to that child as well who doesn't know what's happening but rest assured that child is on their way to a worse fate if they're not stopped if they're not trained properly so what's happening in america to cause our children to act not just this way but also in other ways acting out towards teachers and other students even in school One passage that would come to mind that is usually, if not almost always, taken out of context and applied incorrectly, but if applied correctly, if we do apply this correctly, then we'll see how this works. That is Proverbs 22, 6. We read this as train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The problem with that is that it doesn't always seem to work. I can train a child and then he seems or she seems to get worse and worse and worse, or she doesn't seem or he doesn't seem to respond according to the teaching. Well, that's because that's not quite what the passage says. What it really says is it's not a command. The word train that's used there is not used in the command. It's used as a warning. So it's saying the warning is if you train, if you train how? Let's go back to the passage. It says if you train a child in the way that he should go. And what's listed here, the Hebrew of it is P. Al P. Derko. What does that mean? It means upon the mouth of his way. What that is, is a Hebrew idiom, which means according to the way that he wants to go. And so here is the warning. If you train a child according to the way that he wants to go, according to his desires, if he is a child that likes to express himself, that likes to get his way, well, then if he does so at six years old, then and you train him a lot like that you allow him to be that way at six he'll be that way at 16 he'll be that way at 26 at 56 if you train a child according to the way that he naturally wants to go and since we're all born sinful and wanting to do sinful things well then guess what all you're going to do is train him to become more and more hardened as a sinner and then ultimately as a criminal and unfortunately we have children that you just simply can't say anything to you can't give them corrective or constructive criticism. You can't put them in their place and try to correct them because they might be doing it the wrong way or there's a better way. No, the reason why we have that though is because we have taught our children, one, that no one should say anything bad to them, that they should be happy. As a matter of fact, we've got an anti-bullying campaign that teaches kids not to cope, but it teaches them that no one should ever say anything to them. And so when the first time they are confronted with something negative, when someone resists them, when someone tells them no, when they tell them that they're not pretty, or they're not the strongest, the smartest, well then how do they cope? They did not learn how to cope at five, did not learn how to cope at 10. And so as they get older and older and older, now we've got someone walking into a building who does not know how to cope when he's been fired or didn't receive a promotion or his girlfriend rejected him, does not know how to cope, and then he's going to respond like someone who doesn't know how to cope. Seriously. Oh, you want to write a referral? Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> write a referral for that.
The Bible says in Ephesians 6, and this is the genesis of us all. In Genesis chapter 6, it says, verse 4, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Unfortunately, we can do this provoking either intentionally or unintentionally. We can cause them to be angry. We give them their way. As a matter of fact, let's even go back to the very first word that's used, fathers. Unfortunately, the less and less that we have fathers there, the more we're going to see this acting now. It would not come as a surprise to know that each and every one of these children there either had a dysfunctional relationship with their father or no relationship with their father whatsoever. And so instead of provoking them, causing them, doing things that would push them to anger, he says, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of children being brought up one in a godly home, but also with godly instructions, which is part of the problem. We have more and more adults who aren't parenting, but are just cohabitating with their children, watching games with them, doing this, letting them do these things without actually putting them to test, without instructing them, without making them grow up. And so when they don't get their way, they act out. You went like a different direction than what you normally do, but I think that the face looks like you. And I think that you do a lot of art that's like focused on yourself because you are a fashion designer so you kind of like work from your own body and i don't know if you meant to do that okay well this is bullshit. i'm sorry but like i spend so much time on these projects. now while our hearts may go out to the child and it should uh the child does need discipline but the greater concern is the parenting or really the lack thereof just because you are present in the house with the children does not make you an, a good parent. As a matter of fact, in many cases, we see parents who are not actually doing it. They're adults in the house with children, but not parenting. And so if we follow the instructions that are given by the Bible, without question, the Bible says that when they are older, they will not depart that training. The training must be an instruction of the Lord. And I promise you, though the world won't do that, make sure that you Apply this to your children and then watch how it works out just the way God says. Amen.